Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I want to talk about why I built my own home. Now you may be thinking about building your own home or having your own home built. Regardless, a lot of the same things go into making that decision. So I want to share with you why I built my own home and everything that went behind it. When my wife and I got married, we were a little bit later in life, and many people may be in this situation also. I was in my early 30s, she was in her late 20s, and we had both been living independently in places that we owned. I had a house, she had a condo, so we had lived other places for long periods of time and kind of got to know what we liked and what we disliked in a home. I don't know that I would ever tell anybody that's very young that has not lived in multiple homes to build a new home or build their own home because most likely you're not going to know what you like, you don't have the experience going into it and you're probably gonna make mistakes or regrets along the way. It's nice to have that experience behind you so that you, you kinda know layouts, you know flow patterns, you know a lot of the things that you like, but not only that, the more important thing is what you don't like. That is probably more important than what you do. I would also suggest that any newly married couple live in a place for at least a couple of years before you decide to build your forever home. Take that time to live in a home to figure out your likes and your dislikes and again it's going to make that forever home build that much better. When my wife and I started this journey we were first looking for a house that was on land because that's just what we wanted. We wanted a place to roam so we wanted at least a couple acres and we wanted to be between her folks and my folks. So we were about five miles away from one and about seven miles away from the other. So we put ourselves right where we wanted. Plus we knew what school district we wanted to be even though we didn't have kids yet. Well finding a home in this particular area is not a very easy thing to do. We found some houses that were okay. The problem was they were built in the 70s or the 80s which is fine but the layouts don't jive with what we wanted. We wanted the open concept. We knew we could modify the house to function a little bit better but you know the one thing you're really constrained by is is the building process that uh, the house was built under and most everything that we were looking at was a stick frame home. We knew early on that we wanted to lower our ongoing expenses as much as we possibly could. So that meant reducing the energy that we have to buy, whether that's water, whether that's electricity or gas or propane or any of that kind of stuff. We wanted those bills to be as low as absolutely possible. And that's tough to do in a stick frame home that was built in the 70s or the 80s that just is not airtight at all. Yeah, I could put a lot of time into trying to make it energy efficient, but it's probably better just to start from scratch. And while we could afford these homes up front, again, there'd be a lot of modifications going into it to make it what we wanted. And at the end of the day, it still wouldn't be everything that we wanted. So we knew we wanted a forever home. We were not going to move again. And there were certain things that we wanted. We wanted the bedrooms, the laundry, as well as the living space, the living room, plus the kitchen, all on one level and we knew that we wanted the bedrooms separated from that living space. So we didn't want uh, a bedroom on this side, then the living space, and then bedrooms on this side. We kind of knew how we wanted everything to lay out. And again, that's tough to find. It's not impossible. We went into a bunch of homes that were great. The problem was they weren't in the location that we wanted. They were 800,000 plus, and we had roughly a $400,000 build budget, and they weren't constructed like what we wanted. We wanted low bills and they were mainly stick built homes, even though they are tighter now with new construction than they were back in the 70s and 80s, they still wouldn't match what the ICF home that we wanted would be. And there wasn't a lot of ICF homes being built in this area at the time. So this meant one of two things, either we hire someone to build or we build ourselves. Well, we were smart enough to buy a foreclosure home that had a bunch of property. I divided it in two lots, sold the front lot, got all of our money back, ended up with free land. If you wanna know more about this, I made a video about it, it's gonna be down in the description. At that point, since we had the free land, it was, do we build it or do we have someone else build it? 
Well, again, I was looking at all of the costs and our budget and the size of the house that we were wanting. It didn't make sense to have someone else build it because it was gonna cost too much. It's just outside of our realm of what we could afford. On top of that, I've seen quite a few houses, especially custom houses out here that get built, they cost more than what they are actually worth at the end of the build project. Yes, you may get what you want, but you're paying more for it. So that was kind of a detractor as well. There's a reason that cookie cutter homes are fairly inexpensive. They look like everything else and they're very cheap and easy to build because they're done cheaply for one and they're done at scale. A custom home costs a lot of money. When my wife and I were looking at house plans, we've probably gone through at least a thousand of them before we settled on this one. It was not intended that we build a 6,000 square foot house. Actually, the plans themselves weren't 6,000 square feet. They were actually more like 5,800 square feet. But because we wanted to build with ICF construction, that actually grew the house by a couple hundred square feet just because of how thick those walls are. But at the end of the day, we got the layout that we wanted, we got the style that we wanted, which is kind of a craftsman style, and we got the size that we wanted. Again, we were really shooting more for four to 5,000 square feet, ended up at 6,000 square feet, but we knew we were gonna build the house ourselves. And thankfully, I put myself in a position to where I was able to be able to build my own house. I'll make a whole nother video on how I built that house, how I was able to actually afford it and do it and make the time on another video. I'm not gonna lie to you and say the whole process wasn't stressful or it was easy or anything like that. It's one of the most challenging things I've ever done in my life. But that was part of it. I'm an engineer and so I kind of like to see if I can do things. I'm a lifelong DIYer. So yes, I take on projects sometimes that are outside of the scope of what even I know just to see if I can do it. And this was kind of one of those deals. I did not intend to build a 6,000 square foot house for my first house. I would not recommend anybody do that. That is way too big for your first house build. But it was gonna be a one and done type of build. I did not wanna build a little house and then build a big house. I wanted to be done with this. I'm not getting any younger and my body is starting to fall apart on me. So I don't think I could have been able to do two houses. Since I was able to carve out the time and since I knew that the only way we could afford to build this house was if we did it ourselves, we went ahead and did it. And I'll tell you, there are some actual advantages, not only to the cost side of it, because you aren't paying yourself, you're basically putting in the sweat equity into the house so that you can save those dollars. A lot of people are gonna say, hey, what's the opportunity cost of you not working and whatnot? Well, I don't have a nine to five job, and I don't know that I would tell a person that has a nine to five job to build their own house anyway. So I had the time, that's what I wanted to do. So for me, that was the best opportunity during that time for my time. Since you are building your own house, you're gonna be taking it a heck of a lot slower than what a contractor would. There are things that are, are you're gonna find along the way that you're gonna be able to modify or change because you're going slower. You know, you're making a ton of decisions all along the way with this, but again, you have time to make those decisions because you are building it yourself and because it takes longer. And since you're in that space day in and day out making that home, you can start to test the functionality of the home. Does the layout work? Does it make sense? Do you need a door in this place or you know, a pocket door? Or uh, should this wall not just be an opening, but should we just get rid of it completely? Or you know, things like that. You can really think about daydream while you're actually building your house to make it work better. You don't have to finish everything right off before you actually live in the house. There are certain things that I would definitely want everyone to finish, and that would be all of the drywall work and that sort of stuff. Not only on the main floor, but in the basement as well, which means that you're gonna have to have all the plumbing and electrical and HVAC in place. But 
boy, you don't want to do drywall or have drywall going on while you're living in that space because it's gonna blanket everything in a very thick coat of dust and it's just gonna keep doing it over and over and over until finally that dust is gone. But beyond that, like doors, trim, built-ins, shelving, even closet systems, that sort of stuff, you can wait. You don't have to do it right off the bat. Landscaping, that's another one. You can think about it over time to figure out what makes the most sense. The big thing is to get in that house, get to know the house. You gotta remember you haven't lived in this house yet, so you don't know how everything's gonna flow or how everything's going to function. And if you've finished everything up front, there's no room for improvement as time goes on. So let me give you an example. My wife and I just spent about 16,000 bucks on a whole bunch more custom cabinetry and that sort of stuff. And it's because we hadn't yet built any of that when we built the home. Part of it was we couldn't afford it at the time. We'd blown the budget on the house, actually gone over budget on the house, but we were able to get into it. We've lived in it for a couple of years and it's time to finally start doing that. And so now we're finally able to finish out the pantry where all the food goes. We're able to put in uh, shelving built-ins, our entertainment wall where the TV and stuff go. We're able to build that whole thing. We're able to put the cabinetry in the office as well. We're able to build out the mudroom area. So you don't have to do it all at once. Again, I would encourage you to wait because you're going to fine tune what you actually want in those spaces, how they're going to be used, and you don't make any rash decisions up front. It's a lot better to go into this with as much data and experience as you possibly can. And if you are building your own home, I would say, I hate to say it, bigger is better. You're never going to have enough space. It's like a guy building a shop. It's never ever big enough. And usually a home is kind of like that too. I'd rather overbuild it a little bit than underbuild it because I'm trying to be cheap. My wife and I are kind of homebodies. So our house functions more than just an eating and sleeping area. It's more than a bed and breakfast. For me, it's an office. It's also uh, an entertainment space because we don't have nine to five jobs. So we're there all the time. That space functions for a lot of different things for us. I have an exercise room downstairs so that I can hopefully get healthier. I have a theater room downstairs because that's something that I've always dreamed of. I love, love movies and the surround sound and all of that kind of stuff. It's just something that I wanted and we love it. We have a bunch of storage space in the basement as well. Not only to store stuff, but there's enough room there for as I'm finishing things, like staining and varnishing my doors and my trim and that sort of stuff. I've got space that I can actually work down there in a conditioned space. Plan for the future as well. We are intending for my dad to move in with us at some point, probably within the next few years, and we needed space for him. He's in very good shape, so he can go up and down the stairs no problem, but our basement actually is set up to have a second kitchen down there, there's a couple of bathrooms down there, and there's a couple of bedrooms. So we're gonna have four of the five bedrooms occupy it at all times, meaning that if we did have someone come, we'd only actually have one extra bedroom. So don't just plan for right now. Make sure you plan for the future. Build what you want the first time. Do not take those shortcuts. And if you decide to build your own home yourself, it's an experience that nobody can take away from you. It's really, really cool, and there are not a lot of people that can say, I built my own house. Make sure to hit that like button down below, as well as subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.